Welcome to the Capital News. I am your host, Alex Kreitas. Today is Sunday, August 9th, 2020. Thank you so much for joining me. I know I've been away for a week, as I explained to the audience last week. Glad to be back. I wasn't able to do a podcast while I was on my vacation. My apologies for that. Of course, a lot did take place, but I want to take the time to throw out two podcasts this evening. I am going to break them down into two separate podcasts. I want to focus on our typical data dump that we go through every Thursday, initial claims, continuing claims, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet, etc. And then since last Friday was the first Friday of August, that means the jobs report was produced that gives us the jobs numbers for the month of July. So we will continue our monthly tradition since this pandemic, since I believe it was the month of April. We will do the reading of the jobs report and go through that with a fine tooth comb as we have been. The title of today's podcast is Four for Me and One for You. This is because Congress and the White House were unable, unable at this juncture to come up with another quote-unquote stimulus package. Worry not, they are going to come through. I was not sweating this. We've been talking about this for months, that they are far from over. They can play hardball. They can jockey for position in this political season that we are in here in 2020. Only a couple months away already from a presidential election. This is just smoke and mirrors. This is just political theater. That's all this is. They are going to continue to print, borrow, spend, and beg like never before. Make no mistake about it. This is just theater. This is just to play to their base. This is just to play and to, to appear to be the strong man or woman, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Mitch McConnell, Mnuchin, Kudlow, Trump. That's all it is. They are going to beg, borrow, print, and spend. Make no mistake about it. That's what they do. Okay? And they couldn't come to an agreement, so Trump wants to go forth and use an executive order. He signed a handful of executive orders. He wants to extend the unemployment benefits, but he also wants to go through with a payroll tax holiday and perhaps make it permanent, which is completely unconstitutional, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. If this was Barack Obama, the Republicans would be going crazy. Absolutely crazy. And you know how I know this? Because they did go crazy when Barack Obama did something very similar a handful of years ago when it came to DACA and the Dreamers and immigration. Remember this? Barack Obama, his administration in conjunction with Congress could not come to a deal. So Obama said, screw it. I'm going to sign an executive order and just mandate it myself. Well, you can't do that, Mr. President. The Republicans rightly criticized Barack Obama at the time. Now this thing is in the courts. It's going to get struck down if it hasn't already been struck down. Because so much is going on, I can't honestly remember if DACA has been struck down in the courts. And I think it has been with what Obama did. And rightly so, because it's completely unconstitutional. There is not a bylaw or a by clause in the Constitution that says, well, if Congress and the administration can't come together to pass legislation... Then the president can say, well, whoop de do I'm just going to sign an executive order. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. And now you have the art of the deal maker and Thunder Thumps here in the Oval Office who proclaims that he is the deal maker of deal makers, that he can't get anything done. But make no mistake about it, something is going to get done. But understand this. What the president did with the executive order, extending unemployment benefits indefinitely, suspending the payroll tax and wanting to make it permanent, that is completely unconstitutional. He does not have the authority to do that. It, it, it's, it couldn't be any simpler. He does not have the authority to do it. Barack Obama didn't have the authority to do it. President Trump does not have the authority to do it. But does anybody care? If you're a Republican, probably not, because it's your guy. You cared when it was Obama, but now it's your guy. You don't care. Okay? So get with the picture. The taxing powers, the power of the purse, belongs to Congress, the people's house. It's our money. Our representatives are in control of it, not the executive. Understand this. This is very simple. This is elementary. This is written out in Article 1 of the Constitution. Article 1. This is where this belongs. It belongs in the hands of Congress, not in the hands of the president. 
I don't care if it's a Republican or a Democrat. We are supposed to be honoring our Constitution. I told you they took this thing to the shredder, trampled over it, put it back in the shredder, trampled over it again. They don't care about the Constitution. Trump wants to play the strong man. He wants to sign an executive order, blah, 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 blah. Doesn't care about the constitutionality of it. So be it. Now, for the sake of argument, this appears to be bringing everybody back to the table to get something done. But again, something was going to happen anyway. Now, the other laughable thing about this is the president is proclaiming that if he suspends the payroll tax temporarily or even making it permanent, a logical question is, well, then how are you going to fund Social Security, which, of course, is on its path to insolvency in a few short years? Okay, this isn't from some right wing think tank or from some libertarian think tank that just says it's out of control with government welfare. No, no, this is from the trustees of the Social Security Administration. Okay, it is going to be insolvent. We talk about the national debt here all the time. We talk about the unfunded liabilities here all the time. That's it. Medicare, 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 Medicaid, Social Security. Those are the two main drivers of the unfunded liabilities, which is in the trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars, okay, for future outstanding liabilities. So, Mr. President, how are you going to fund it? Oh, well, it's not going to be, it's not going to have an effect on it. How can he even utter those words? That's what the payroll tax funds. So we're going to have even bigger blowout deficits, even bigger debts. Cannot do it. I don't want these taxes. You understand this, but you have to cut spending. Is the government cutting spending? Absolutely not. They are upping, upping, upping. upping <laughs> they just keep upping it, upping it, and upping it. So this is basic mathematics. It has to come to an end. You want to cut taxes? Fantastic. I want the payroll tax to be abolished. I want the federal income tax to be abolished. But you have to cut spending with it. Because if you only do one, it's a half ass job. And it's a disaster in the making. That's what we just witnessed with those massive tax cuts a couple of years ago. And we ended up with a $1 trillion deficit before COVID-19. As we explained here on the Capitol News, would happen. Why? Because they didn't cut spending. You can't have it both ways. You can't say we're going to cut taxes and we're going to keep spending as is or actually increase it and expect everything to be completely fine. It's not fine and we are all going to be finding this out very shortly. And it's not going to be a pretty picture. But just understand this. The executive order, it's unconstitutional. The president does not have the authority to do it. I know most of you don't care, but I'm just letting you know. Okay? Some of the headlines, we have Chinese inflation rate rises to, the, to a three-month high. China's annual inflation rate rose to 2.7% in July of this year, from 2.5% in the month of June, and above market expectations of 2.6%. This was the highest inflation rate since April, as food inflation hit its highest in three months amid a faster rise in pork prices. There you have it, folks. China food inflation highest in three months. The food prices in China increased by 13.2% from a year earlier. But they'll tell us that inflation does not exist. Fantastic. And right now, in the cash trade over in Australia, we have the Australian market up about 1.5% on the hopes that there's going to be more stimulus from the United States of America. Isn't that fantastic? They just, they, they milk these headlines for what they're worth. You got to give them credit for that. It's unbelievable. Right now we have the dollar index at 93 spot 30, slightly down, but above 92 where it was some trading parts last week. We have on the commodity front, we have WT, WTI trading at $41.74 a barrel. Brent, the international metric is at $44.80. And natural gas has been on a huge rocket ride, now trading at $2.25 sense. So a huge turnaround in natural gas over the past couple of weeks. Gold and silver had a fantastic week last week, although they did have a little bit of a correction on Friday. Spot gold price is trading at $2,030 an ounce. Silver spot 
is trading at $28 even. Now again, have a lot of conviction that we are in a long-term bull market when it comes to the precious metal space with all of this money printing, with the race, the currency war, the race to the bottom, the geopolitical risks, the tensions, the Cold War between the United States and China, etc., 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 the pandemic, everything. You name it. You know what 2020 is. We're not even half. We're just a little bit over halfway done with it. It's out of control. Gold and silver are going to be safe havens. And they might truly even come back in vogue because these fiat currencies are going out of style. That's why they are printing money like it's going out of style because it is. So get your hands on some of this stuff. In my opinion, again, I don't give advice, but look into it. Diversify your portfolio. Look into having it physically. Look into having, have, look into the gold and uh, silver mining stocks, etc. They're killing these currencies. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Look into it. On the bond front, we have the U.S. 10-year Treasury junk note yielding spot 5-7%. Hmm. Another little bit of a roller coaster ride in Uncle Sam's debt, but again, still trading with a five handle. I, I really think there, there's going to be an eventual blow up in the bond market. It, uh, in, in so many markets. But you continue to have a schism between the stock market and the bond market. So many markets are sending mixed signals. Who's going to prove to be right? I think net-net it's going to be gold and silver. I think they are sniffing out the coming inflation. I think they are sniffing out the failure of these fiat currencies. I think they are sniffing out the geopolitical tensions and a whole slew of other things. And they have been money for centuries. So why would they not prove to be money today and in the future? So again, look into it. Now, on to some of the initial claims. This is obviously from the Department of Labor. For the week ending August 1st, 1.186 million Americans filed for initial claims. 1.186 million. This is a decrease from the prior week of July 25th of a minus 249,000. That, of course, is a good thing that's in the right direction, but we have been seeing over 1 million Americans file for initial, and I stress initial claims, since this pandemic, since these shutdowns, these lockdowns, these reopening phases, shutdown phases, everything, all of this back and forth. A little bit of a slowdown. But re recall the past two weeks, the past two weeks were both increases, all right? And we have the expiration, obviously, of a lot of these benefits, unemployment benefits, pandemic response, emergency response, everything coming to an end, unless, of course, Congress comes back to the table and does something for the people. That's the reason why today's episode is titled Four for Me and One for You, because Congress, at the drop of a hat can pass billions and trillions of dollars in conjunction with the Federal Reserve, in conjunction with the U.S. Treasury, and bail out major corporations. They can buy the corporate debt of not only domestic corporations, but international corporations, some of which are the largest in the world, that have more cash on hand than God. Drop of a hat. Four for you, four for me, one for you. That, that's, that's all it is. They don't care about you. They want to play hardball with your benefits. Again, I'm against these bailouts. But if they're going to give billions and billions of dollars and trillions of dollars to corporations to bail them out, even though they squandered their resources over the past decade, lining their personal pockets by using all the cheap money, buying back their shares, artificially lifting their stock price, and because their compensation is tied to their stock price, well... They made out like fat cats. Didn't save for a rainy day. A rainy day is here. And now they go crying to mommy, daddy, government. And they get a paycheck. A big one. Who gets fired? Nobody. Nobody. Some of them are still even filing for bankruptcy. We talked about this many, many times for, before. 
Four for me, one for you. And now they are bickering about how much to give you or to not give you. Corporations, billions, trillions of dollars, drop of a hat. No questions asked. This is going to get very hairy in the political system, in the po political election cycle here. Because this is going to be front and center when it comes to the Republicans and the Democrats. Remember, it was 96 to nothing. No votes for America the first time around with the Nobody Cares Act. Don't forget this. Don't forget this. The Republicans can try to play hardball all they want. They voted for this crap. Make no mistake about it. Now they are putting themselves in position. Well, where things are not getting better and in fact are going to get much, much worse as we progress here. And now they're saying, well, yeah, it's completely fine for the Federal Reserve and the Treasury to bail out and give all this funny money to whoever they want. But when it comes to the people, mm, no, you got 600 before now, it's, it's only going to be a couple hundred, a few hundred. That is not going to sit well with a lot of the electorate. Okay? So this is going to get very dicey. Now, again, I don't justify it. I don't like the bailouts. But if they're going to give trillions to corporations, why can't they give trillions to the people? It's a logical question. And we'll see what happens come November. We have continuing claims for the week ending July 25th at 16.1 million. 16.1 million for the week of July 25th, the most recent week for the continuing claims figure. From the week prior, ending July 18th, this is a change of a minus 844,000. So again, in the right general direction. That's what we want to see. Obviously, more people back to work. When we have the week ending for August 1st for the pandemic unemployment assistance, we are resting at 655,000 individuals. This is a change of a minus 253,000 from the week prior of July 25th. Again, something we want to see, but we, are also, we also know that these programs are expiring. So if they're expiring, you can't have it. Eventually, these are going to go to zero just because you can no longer claim them. However, the grand total, when we take regular state, when we take federal employees, newly just discharged veterans, pandemic unemployment assistance, pandemic emergency UC unemployment compensation, extended benefits, state additional benefits, work share. We get a grand total for the week ending July 18th. Remember, this lags, this grand total lags a few weeks. July 18th, a total of 31.3 million Americans claiming some sort of unemployment compensation. This is a change from the week prior, which would be July 11th, of a positive 492,816 individuals. So, this is what we were expecting. This is, of course, in the wrong direction because this is an increase from the week prior. But again, these lag a few weeks. But because we know that there were shutdowns and slowdowns to the reopening phases across the country because of new spikes in several states with COVID-19 cases, this was expected. We still do not have a full picture when it comes to to the job front. Because when we go through the jobs report, it's going to claim that 1.8 million Americans were hired, that 1.8 million jobs were created in the month of July. This is bogus. If you just take the month of June through July after the, the survey period where the Bureau of Labor Statistics calls people up, are you employed, blah, 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 ask them their survey questions. Okay, you're talking about 7 million Americans filed initial jobless claims over this period. So the Bureau of Labor Statistics wants you to believe that 1.8 million jobs were created in the month of July, even though over that time period, 7 million Americans filed initial jobless claims. This is quite the magic trick, but this is par for the course. This is not new. This is what happens on a regular basis. But when we dig through it and we go through it with a fine-tooth comb, you're going to understand that there is some funny business, which is no surprise. And it's also starting to play out as we have expected with some of those finer points, which are not going to be discussed mainly by the president, by Mnuchin, by Kudlow, 
by the financial mainstream media. But we're going to talk about it here because that's the nut and bolt, nuts and bolts of everything. $1.8 million. And again, like I was saying, we don't have that full picture because of the PPP loans, all of these other extensions, everything else that's going on. And we're going to start seeing that picture a little more clearly when we go through it, when we look at hours worked. Because that's really starting to paint the picture, as we have been discussing, that hours are going to be cut back because there is no demand. And of course, people can get hired back as a contingency to the PPP loans for them to become grants. Therefore, they are forgiven. I'm going to put you on payroll. But is there demand for those workers? And what we are seeing in this jobs report, the answer is a clear no because the hours worked is just through the floor, just through the floor. We will get to that. So that's the jobs numbers from initial claims and continuing claims. When it comes to the Federal Reserve's balance sheet, we are still just shy of $7 trillion. But again, make no mistake about it. If, and really more a question of when, Congress gets together in conjunction with the White House and passes this next round of quote-unquote stimulus with another trillion-plus price tag to it, we will be well north of $7 trillion in short order. But we are now at the Federal Reserve's balance sheet of $6,945 trillion, billion, which is a slight increase from the week prior, but really not so much. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Actually, it's a decrease of about $4, $4 billion, but that's a rounding error as far as, as far as I'm concerned. $4 billion is chump change compared to what these idiots have thrown out into the system over the past several months. It's criminal, but who cares? And you want to talk about criminal. We talked about Kodak, right? We talked about Kodak last week or a week and a half ago because... Miraculously, this photo company, this camera company, is now going to be a producer of active pharmaceutical ingredients. Just announced, just decreed by the White House. We're going to give them some $760 million. Again, this is unconstitutional. The Congress, the government, does not have the authority to lend. That's not the powers that are vested in our government. Our government can borrow money, but it cannot lend it out. The government is not supposed to be in the business of picking winners and losers. And of course, they go to this bankrupt company with a stock trading at 2 to $3. And then miraculously, over the course of a couple days, it spikes to about $60 per share. Well, now there is an investigation. Oh, my God. It's only been three going on four years here with this crap going on, with all this stock market manipulation, and now finally the SEC is opening an investigation, seeing what's going on with this funny business. I mean, I guess they got a little too greedy. 30 times from $2 to 60 well, guys, you're getting a little out of hand here with this stuff. We were letting everything else go on, and we've given how many examples over the past year and a half that we've been online here at the Capitol News. You got out of hand. You got too greedy. Two to 60. Are you guys out of your mind? Now we have to get up. Chuck, get off your butt. We have to open investigation. Oh, I don't want to do it, Bob. They, hey, stock went up 30 times. Oh, my God, they got too greedy. And that's exactly what they're doing now. They pushed the envelope too far, and now there's an investigation. Insider trading, who made what, who's doing what. I mean, you can open up an investigation on all these idiots. All of them. This goes up to Trump. This is throughout the administration. You can even open an investigation, as far as I'm concerned, on Dr. Fauci, because Dr. Fauci will come out and talk about the progress with certain companies, with certain vaccines or thera therapeutics. Are you, are you kidding me? Has anybody asked the good doctor here? Do you own these stocks, Dr. Fauci? Are you invested? Are members of your family or f close friends owners of these companies? Wouldn't they reap a benefit if these companies put forth a vaccine? Don't you think these people understand that when they put out these headlines that these share prices take off? 
I mean, I'm nobody special. I figured this out three years ago. You think these people haven't figured it out? I mean, talk about corruption. This is at the highest level. And nobody seems to care. It's at any cost. And it's at the cost of our republic, our constitution. It's at the cost of free market capitalism. It's at the cost of our society. We are in economic financial ruin. We are in societal collapse. There is no leadership. This is a banana republic. Everybody, it's a free-for-all. That's exactly what you are witnessing. You can blame the Democrats more than the Republicans. You can blame the Republicans more than the Democrats. That's exactly what they want you to do. You are falling into the trap of divide and conquer. That it's just the Democrats, or the Democrats are worse, or the Republicans are worse. Well, somebody's a little bit better. I mean, this is a kindergarten argument. Well, he jumped off the bridge. Can't I jump off the bridge? Well, he made a bigger splash. I made a smaller splash, so I'm better. This is ridiculous. But that's exactly what's in front of you. And that's exactly what they want. So it can be four for me and one for you. But, hey, you want to argue about masks and beans and, and monuments? Be my guest. While they run away with the loot, while they trample over the Constitution, be my guest. But that's exactly what you're going to get. And then, lastly... We were expecting Joe Biden to announce his VP pick last week. He didn't do it. Why not, Joe? What's the matter? Did you forget to do it? You couldn't come up with it. You couldn't make a decision. What's going on? Do you just want to float things out there to see how the media responded, to see how the Republicans responded, to see how the president responded? What did you want to do? Well, supposedly this week is going to be the week he announces his VP pick. Again, I really think it's between Elizabeth Warren and Susan Rice. Of course, Kamala Harris has been thrown out there. If he picks Kamala Harris, he's really shooting himself in the foot. Not that I agree or like Elizabeth Warren or Susan Rice. I think he's going to have a lot of trouble there as well. But, hey, it's his pick. We'll see what happens. Kamala Harris shot herself in the foot on the campaign trail. We'll see if she can recuperate that, revive her image. That's, of course, assuming she is selected as the VP, but time will tell. And of course, it could be somebody that we're not expecting. It could be somebody that we're not expecting. But that's some of the news for today. Again, I am putting out two podcasts today because I was off last week. So here we have initial claims, continuing claims, Federal Reserve's balance sheet, and a little other nonsense that is typical. And then the second one will be a reading of the jobs report for the month of July. Stay diversified, stay vigilant, and stay with the Capital News. I am Alex Caritas. Godspeed.